Hello there you guys, I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm very excited to share with you the best apple pie. I've been working on this recipe for years and I shared a version of it a year ago, two years ago now, and I thought it was about time to give a little bit of a revamped version. As with all of my videos now, the beginning first part here is going to be a vlog of the process and the end is a recap or how-to step-by-step guide of well, making the recipe that you can follow. And all of the timestamps will be down below and on that little scroll bar if you're interested. I did end up filming day one, just kind of filming it. I shared more of a vlog version of it on my vlog channel, which I will link up above and at the end. Oh, and it's down below as well. So if you're interested in seeing that, that will be there. But just to get all on the same page and enter into day two for day one, I prepped the apple filling, the first part of the apple filling, which involves peeling the apples, chopping them up, adding in the sugar, lemon, and spices, then just making sure they're all evenly coated before covering them and allowing them to set overnight. Now just to let it sit overnight. Alrighty, so welcome to day two of apple pie making. Yesterday I finished prepping the apples and today all I need to do, finish setting up the filling and make the crust, then just bake it. Alrighty, so the two most important ingredients that will be going into this recipe is the flour and the butter. There are a couple more really key ingredients to the crust, but these two are the ones that are most important. And a good tip, make sure that the butter is super cold when you get started. I almost forgot I need to add a bit of salt and sugar before we get mixing. So when it comes to forming the crust, I find it best done by hand. Personally, I think it's a great way to infuse your own personal intent into it, and it's also just a really effective means of doing so. So to do this, I just use my fingertips and press the butter and flour together. Typically, I begin just by breaking up the butter and then combining it all. Once you reach this consistency, it's time to add in the egg yolk and water mixture. This will help add a lot of beautiful color and just seal it all together. Now to just roll it out and get it set in the pie tin. Alrighty, so now it's time for the fun part. I just did a simple edge on the pie so that I could save most of the scrap. And now I'm going to make some decorative pieces. I think I'll just try to do a few braids from what's left here. I just popped the part of the crust in the fridge. I covered it up. It's really important to get that as cold as possible. The colder, the better, the more flaky and beautiful the crust will be. So now I've just started making the crust, putting it in the tin, and then placing it straight into the fridge. And I'll pull it out right before the pie is ready to go in the oven, add the filling, and just let it go. But first, time to make something a little bit prettier to add to it. All 
Alrighty, so now that the crust is done and resting in the fridge, all I need to do now is clean up a bit and prep the apple filling. So let's get to it then, shall we? Alrighty, so I'm not gonna lie to you, I ended up stopping filming partway through yesterday, so what is the next day? I read a nasty comment, which I should not have looked at comments halfway through filming, and it left me feeling not great. So instead of finishing the apple pie, I went for a walk and then lost my lighting. So we're back at it today. I thought it was important to note because it is now rainy and I have had an outfit change. So just putting that out there different day. Now we're making a three-day apple pie, but that's okay. That's how it goes sometimes. I just pulled these guys out of the fridge. They're doing wonderfully. I'm kind of surprised. I was a little worried how they'd turn out, but it's great. It seems perfectly fine. And so now all that's left to do is to make the caramel apple jelly. And I'm very excited because this is my favorite part. So to finish, we'll be using maple syrup, a little bit of cornstarch mixed with water to make a slurry so that it doesn't get too clumpy, and a bit of butter. So what I've done now is separate the apple juice from the apples over here. This part is just back in the bowl. This will become the jelly and that's where these ingredients over here will come in handy. It's all pretty straightforward. Put it all in the pot, bring it up to temperature, well, save the butter. Put the maple syrup and the cornstarch slurry in here, bring it up to temperature once it starts to thicken and right before it boils, add in the butter. So. That's the plan and I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna put it on a low heat and while it gets up to temperature, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and make the crumble. So making the crumbles really simple, you'll just need equal parts oats, sugar, brown sugar, and flour, along with a bit of butter. Then just combine it all in a bowl and pinch it together. It's time just to combine it all and pop it in the oven. Alrighty, so here's how to make the best apple pie. Like I said before, I have been working on this recipe for years now. I shared a version of it two years ago and I feel like it's just gotten better. I've messed with the spices a bit and added a few new things, so I hope you enjoy it. And well, let's just get into it, shall we? 
First and foremost, this apple pie will take two days to complete. Day one is focused on starting the filling, and then day two revolves around making the crust, finishing the filling, and making a crumble. You're welcome to make the crust on day one if you prefer to, and the crumble even. Personally, I just tend to do it in day two because I'm really putting everything together that day but those two are shiftable. You also are welcome to do a different form of crust if you'd like to, or topping. Personally, I enjoy having a crumble topping or a Dutch topping. A lot of times this is considered a Dutch apple pie. I think it is a wonderful way to make apple pies, but if you'd prefer to just have a crust on top, that's totally welcome as well. So I will explain how to do that. You'll just have to double the crust recipe I have. So there's a little bit of leeway and experimentation open there for you on timing and what you prefer things to look like, but day one will always begin the same way. Though I suppose before we get into that, we should cover the ingredients first. So you'll need, for the filling, one bag or 10 good apples, green apples preferably, one cup of brown sugar, the juice of one lemon, one fourth teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and half a teaspoon of ground cloves, though I've only been adding the cloves now to my winter recipes, so if I'm making this, say, for the winter holidays around December, that's when I would add the clove. Other times of the year I feel like it doesn't necessarily need it, but it's up to you. You'll also need half a cup of maple syrup and three tablespoons of cornstarch. Then for the crust, you'll need two cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt, ten tablespoons of cold, cold butter, Really make sure it's super cold while you're making it. That is the key to having a beautiful flaky crust. One tablespoon of sugar or cinnamon sugar. I've started adding this to my crust and it's made such a huge difference in sweet pastries. Also, honestly, the cinnamon sugar is the best way to go about this in my opinion. You'll also need two egg yolks and four tablespoons of water ice water preferably. Like I said earlier, if you'd like to have a crust on the top of your pie, double this recipe. Then if you're going to do the crumble topping, you'll need half a cup of oats, half a cup of flour, half a cup of brown sugar, and half a cup of white sugar. Then this step isn't necessary. I often go without it, and in this pie I did, mainly because I forgot to, but you can also add some spices to the crumble as well, and that just kind of rounds out the whole pie experience. So for that, I would recommend adding 1 4 teaspoon of nutmeg, 3 4 teaspoons of cinnamon, and if it's the holiday season, I would recommend adding 1 4 teaspoon of ground clove. Oh, and also for the crust, if you're doing an open one or a decorative one at all, you'll need an extra egg for an egg wash and some coarse sugar to sprinkle on top. And that's it for the ingredients. So let's enter into day one. Day one, you have to focus on making the filling. It's pretty simple. Just take your apples, peel them, chop them up really thin. I think they're best when they're long, but thin. Add them all to a bowl, then cover them with the sugar, lemon juice, and all your spices. Then make sure to coat each apple slice with all the ingredients. Personally, I think this is best done with your hands. You're welcome to do it with a spoon if you prefer, but it's really just not as effective. Especially because those apples like to stick together and you kind of need to break them apart. Then cover with a towel and allow to rest overnight. Sometimes I leave it out on the counter, sometimes I put it in the fridge. It kind of depends on what the temperatures are in the house. I'd probably recommend just putting it in the fridge overnight, but Either or works in my experience. Now for day two, begin by making the crust. Making the crust is really simple. Honestly, just combine all of your ingredients, save for the egg yolks and water, and pinch them all together with your fingers. I'd recommend chopping the butter into small cubes before beginning. I begin by pinching the butter so it's a little easier to work with, and then I incorporate it into the rest of the mixture. Once it all seems to be pretty nice and together, your butter can still be rather alone, kind of aim for pea-sized amounts of butter, but making sure everything is all mixed together pretty well. Then take your two egg yolks and four tablespoons of water and mix them together. Typically I do this with a fork. Then pour just a little bit at a time into your flour crust mixture. Bring it together with your hands, 
depending on where I am and what season it is, the moisture of your area, you'll end up using a different amount of this egg yolk and water mixture. So just pour it in a little bit at a time until the crust really starts to form together. I often get asked why I use egg yolk in my crust. And personally, I've just found that it adds such a beautiful color to the crust and a depth of flavor that it otherwise wouldn't have. So I'd recommend it. I think it adds a lot. But anyways, once you have your crust all clumping together, roll it out onto a floured surface, making sure to get it pretty thin. Then roll it up in your rolling pin, put it on top of your pie form, pie tin, pie thing, and pinch it all together. You can have some broken sides, that's totally fine. Just pinch it up. Do whatever kind of edge you'd like to do. This one I went really simple and just kind of smushed my thumb around the whole way, and then I cut around the whole edge. Take all of that excess crust that you have and save it. This you can either make into a mini pie later, or cinnamon rolls, or just enjoy and make some beautiful decorations, which is what I did. I rolled this out again and made some braids and leaves to add later. Once this is all done, pop both the crust and your decorations if you've made them in the fridge. If you're gonna do a top crust, once again, double that recipe, roll it out and pop that in the fridge as well. Make sure to cover these up with plastic wrap or something similar to keep the moisture in them. Then it's time for my favorite part, which is making the apple caramel jelly. So take your apples out from wherever they've been resting and uncover them. You'll see that they've kind of created a lot of apple juice and this apple juice is what you want. It is so beautiful and so delicious and we're going to make it even better. So pull out a pot and a strainer, pour the apples into the strainer, making sure to get every last bit of liquid. So stir them around just to get every last drop. Then return the apples to the bowl they were originally in and pop that liquid on the stove. Before bringing it up to heat, add in the maple syrup and create a slurry with a little bit of water and your cornstarch. I found that it's a crucial step to make a slurry with the cornstarch, otherwise it just becomes clumpy and awful and hard to work with. So just a little bit of water, swirl it around with your finger and then pour that into the apple liquid. Then turn it on a low heat, keeping your eye on it, stirring every now and again. And if you're comfortable, you can make the crumble topping during this time. But if you haven't done this before, I'd recommend maybe just doing that before or saving it till after, as the apple jelly will gel up pretty quick. I personally made the crumble while I was making the jelly and it's pretty simple. Really just combine all of your ingredients and pinch them together similar to how the crust was. It doesn't have to be beautiful. Really, we're looking for pea-sized amounts of butter and just kind of, well, a crumbly looking mixture. Then once that's done, let's turn our gaze back to the apple jelly. Make sure to stir it once it starts steaming. I think it's really important to keep your eyes on it because it really does just in the blink of an eye gel up. You'll notice that it's reached the right consistency when you can draw your spoon through it and there's a clear line that appears and slowly comes back together at the bottom of your pan. So keep stirring till it gets there and then right before it boils, which will be right after it comes together, turn off the heat and add in the butter. Then stir it all together and take it off the heat. Personally, I like to let it cool for a second before adding it to the apples, but you really don't have to. It's just a little bit of an easier experience for me to hold all the tools together. But like I said, you don't have to. Simply just add the apple jelly, caramel jelly that you've made to the apples. Mix it all together with a spoon, making sure it's evenly coated and distributed throughout. Then pull out your crust, add the apple filling to the crust, add on your crumble topping if you're doing it, and the decorations or your regular crust if you're doing that. And then Pop it in the oven at 400 for 45, 50 minutes. If you're doing a crumble topping, I'd recommend covering the top of it with tin foil for the first 35, 40 minutes. This way it won't burn, but I wouldn't leave it on the whole time because then you would miss out on having a beautiful golden crust. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you have any crust showing, do an egg wash and sprinkle some sugar on it. And then once it's done, pull it out, allow it to cool and enjoy. It really is the best apple pie in my opinion, and I know that that is a very big statement to make, but I've worked really hard on it, put a lot of years into it, and I'm really proud of it. So I hope you give it a try and enjoy it. 
But anywho, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, if you haven't seen my other channel, I would recommend checking it out. It's where I share vlogs filled with more herbalism, cooking, and witchy magic of my everyday. And I know it's not for everyone, but if you can and would like to, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share my art, herbalism, herbal profiles, and some other fun things. And it's really what keeps things running over here. I really couldn't be doing this without you guys, and I'm eternally grateful to all of you. So thank you so much. and. Thank you for watching, I really hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you soon.